Can I join you? Is that okay? Oh, no, it's not okay. Hello, today I'm going to be recommending you guys a ton of books. There has been a book rec tag going around booktube and I believe Steph Barrer, I don't know how to say her last name, invented this book tag and has a bunch of fun questions, so. Okay, bye. So yeah, I thought it'd be fun to jump in on the book rec trend because I feel like I haven't just like sat down and recommended you guys a bunch of books in a long time. Okay, let's get started. The first question is, a book you tell people is your favorite book. Now, I don't know if this is bad or not, but I feel like I change my favorite book answers based on who I'm talking to. Just because like if somebody asks me my favorite book and they're like a dude that I like know is not gonna be into romance and I like say a romance book, that's gonna be like the end of the conversation because they're gonna be like, okay, cool. Like, like there's nothing further to talk about past that because I know that's not a book they're gonna be into. The Akatar series. I love this series so much with my whole freaking heart. This series is so hyped, but like for a reason because it is that good. It's fantasy, it's romance. I feel like the plot is absolutely crazy. I've never had more of like a book hangover and like book whiplash from the endings of these books. Each one ends with like such a bang. There's also such like a huge cast of characters. So we get like such great friendships, great relationships. If everyone in the world read this book, there'd be like one character that they would bond with at least. Then the second book that I say is my favorite book a lot is The Atlas Six, which I also love. It is magical realism. It is about six magicians competing to get into this secret society and only five magicians will get into the society. And we read from all the different characters' POVs on like their strategies. Like sometimes they have to work together, other times they're working against each other. And they all have different like magical powers. If you're someone who wants to like dip your toe into fantasy, I feel like this is a great book because it does have magic in it, but it is set like in our earth in modern times. So it's not like a crazy fantastical world. The second question is, a book that is your guilty pleasure. Now as a romance reader, I feel like I have so many guilty pleasure romances. This might be a controversial opinion, I don't know, but I kind of like love like Wattpad-y, like cheesy, like a little bit trashy, like spicy romances. That I would say is like the epitome description of my guilty pleasure. And the book that fits that really well is Top Secret by L. Kennedy and Serena Bowen. It's a college romance between two fraternity brothers. Like does that get more college than that? It's super spicy. And what kind of kicks off this romance is that Keaton, one of the fraternity brothers, has a girlfriend and for her birthday, she wants to have a threesome. So like I said, like a little bit trashy, you know? But like, I love that. And so Keaton goes on this like male dating app to find like a third dude. And that's where he meets Luke his fraternity brother who he hates, but they don't know that they're messaging with each other because it's like an anonymous app. So it's just like a wild plot. This is like not something that I would tell people I read just because the plot's a little like, ooh, taboo, like spicy, but such a guilty pleasure of mine. Another guilty pleasure that I'm actually reading right now, which I feel like shows how much I'm already loving this book that I would recommend it when I haven't even finished it, is the Mindfuck series. I would say my guilty pleasure, like movies and shows are romance and true crime. And this book just encompasses both of those so well. It's a romance between an FBI agent and a serial killer, which, it's just like the craziest plot I've ever heard. And the FBI agent specializes in investigating serial killers. So he's literally investigating her case because she is the serial killer. So like they're starting this romantic relationship. She's killing people. He's trying to catch her. Like it's just such a crazy plot. I also want to tell you guys about a really great place that you can discover new books. And that is Web Novel. Thank you so much to Web Novel for sponsoring today's video. Web Novel is an app that has a huge array of novels and comics from romance, to fantasy, manga, sci-fi, fanfic, and so much more. One of the stories that really caught my eye is Shadow Slave. Our main character, Sunny, gets chosen for an elite group of people with supernatural powers, and he is transported into a ruined magical world where he has to face really terrible monsters. The novel has such immersive world building, which I love, and very realistic and relatable characters. It's also so action-packed. Our main character is such a great fighter who wins fights with a mix of techniques, strategies, and some really cunning methods. Plus, if you're not only interested in reading stories, but also writing stories, you can write your own stories on Web Novel. You can join their bi-weekly writing prompt contest and publish your novel with their matchmaking system to millions of their readers. So whether you love writing or reading or both, Web Novel would be perfect for you. And you can check out Shadow Slave, which will be linked in my description, and use my code for discounts on premium content which will also be in my description. A book that everyone loved, but you didn't. Okay, I've got two books. The first one being November 9th. I 
liked the first like half of this book, but I just really hated the ending. There was like a plot twist at the end and I just felt like it was really forced. I didn't like it. It felt like weird to me. And it has a really, really cool concept. It's about Ben and Fallon and they meet every single November 9th. So that's such a cool idea that they only see each other one day a year on the same day every single year. So I feel like I had high expectations going into the book because it's such a cool concept, but the concept really fell flat for me because I feel like we didn't really get to know about their lives that much because we only see them one day every single year. The book that I have read that I hate the most, my number one most hated book that people love is Maybe Someday also by Colleen Hoover. I promise I love other Colleen Hoover books, but I just, this book, Maybe Someday, I hate this book so much. It's a love triangle book and there's a part of it that like I really hate that's like a spoiler, so you don't wanna say it. But let's just say things get a little morally gray with the love triangle. Not really made me angry. Like the characters do some questionable things where I was like, okay, I don't like you guys now. And now I'm not rooting for you. And if I'm not rooting for you, why am I reading this book? Okay, next up is a book that you've read the fastest and that would be The Wall of Winnipeg and Me. I think I read this book in like two and a half days, which I've definitely read books in one day before. So it's not the fastest time wise, but this book is like 650 pages. So for me to read this thick of a book in like two days is so fast for me. It's a slow burn, it's a sports romance, and it's about Vanessa who is the assistant to Aiden, a pro football player. Are you kidding me? Like that's so attractive. And she does not like working for him. So she ends up quitting and he shows up at her house and is like, I can't find anyone to replace you. Like you're the best, please come back and work for me. Something about slow burn, I just devour those because I'm like, I need, I need to see them get together. A second book that I read super fast is Rock, Paper, Scissors, which I'm letting my mom borrow right now, so I don't have it with me. This book is a thriller and each chapter ends in like a mini cliffhanger, which I feel like is so fun. So at the end of every chapter, I was like, I have to start the next one. So I read this book so fast. A book that deserves more hype. I've got two wrecks, Nunchal Sleep and The Wicked Deep. Nunchal Sleep is a young adult murder mystery and it follows two teenagers, Emma and Travis, and Emma survived almost being killed by a serial killer. So the FBI recruits both of these teens and they are tasked with interviewing juvenile serial killers. So I feel like that's super interesting to like get into the minds of not just serial killers, but juvenile serial killers. And with Emma's past of almost being killed from a serial killer, like how that affects her mentally, what kind of special insights that gives her. So they're working on these past cases and then a new serial killer emerges who is hunting teenagers. So they also end up working on this current case as well. And then The Wicked Deep. This is the best book for like the atmosphere. Like it takes place in this tiny little cursed town called Sparrow. This town is haunted by three sisters who were killed for allegedly being witches many, many years ago. And these witches lure boys into the harbor and pull them under every single summer. There's also a romance, which like, are you kidding me? Like a cursed, creepy mystery town with a romance. Super, super good. A book that is becoming a movie or TV series. I feel like we all know Daisy Jones and the Six. I love this book. I haven't seen the show yet, but it is out. So I have no excuse. I need to go watch it. I've seen the trailer for the show and I just feel like it's gonna be so accurate to the book. It takes place in the seventies. It involves a rock band, drugs, fame, and then one that's already out that I have already seen is the Heartstopper. The books are graphic novels, so like super quick reads. Love the graphic novels. And the show is so freaking cute. It features so many diverse characters, lots of queer romances, and it's just really freaking adorable. A book that you have reread the most. So I have never ever fully reread a book, which I feel like is kind of surprising for me because I read so much. I don't know. I just like don't have a big desire to reread a book, but there are a good amount of books that I will go back and reread my favorite scenes all the time. One of them being Red, White, and Royal Blue. What I love about this book is that the characters start out having like a long distance friendship. So they have a ton of emails between each other and text messages between each other. And something about just like text in books, whether it's like a letter, an email, a text message, I just love. So I will go back and read like the emails between the characters all the time. And the ones with scenes that I reread the most is the off-campus series. I literally just bought the score so I could reread my favorite scenes. I just like love in the whole off-campus series, the moment when the characters get together. So like those scenes in every book in the series, I will like flip back to and read like once a month. 
I'm obsessed. A book from a genre you don't typically read. So I have read very, very, very few nonfiction in my life. And my favorite one is When Breath Becomes Air. This book is so good. It's so heartbreaking. It's about Paul who has had a decade's worth of training to become a neurosurgeon. And then he gets diagnosed with stage four cancer. He has worked so hard his whole life to become a neurosurgeon. And now he will never become a neurosurgeon. And then also to be someone who has worked on that doctor side of things, now becoming a patient is really interesting every single person should read this book. There's just so much commentary and insight from Paul. Paul wrote this book himself when he was dying of how to prioritize your life because you never know what will happen. And also to see him kind of toe that line of doctor and patient because he is the patient, but he also has all this medical knowledge where he wants to look at his own files and come up with his own treatment plan. Another genre that I'm just starting to get into that I haven't read a ton is fantasy. So I would recommend Shadow and Bone. I know this book is like kind of controversial in the sense that like I've heard a lot of people say they don't love it and I have no idea why because I loved it. It's a whole series and so far I've only read the first book in the series. It's got such a cool world. We've got Alina, our main character, and she is such a strong female character who's got a badass power, which I love. We've also got a romance subplot and yeah, it just has all the elements that I love. A book that deserves all the hype it gets, 1000% The Inheritance Games. I've seen a ton of people talk about this series as they should because it is so good. I think I named this one of my top three books of 2022. It's got romance. It's got mystery. It's got puzzles, secret passageways, three attractive brothers, a love triangle. It's young adult, so it's good for all ages. And some other books that are worth the hype are honestly just every Emily Henry book. I would say Emily Henry is one of my top three authors of all time. I love her so much. Beach Read, big throwback. I feel like one of the first like OG book talk books to like get super popular. I will recommend this book till the day I die. Some other favorites by her is People We Meet on Vacation and Book Lovers. Just the best romances. And she is the queen of banter in my opinion. A book you recommend when asked to give a recommendation. So a lot of times you guys will DM me on Instagram and just say like, hey Ali, I don't know what to read. What should I read? Or like I'm trying to get into reading. What's a good book to read? So if someone asks me for a recommendation with like no context on what they're into, I will typically tell them better than the movies. Number one, because it's young adult, so it's great for all ages. The main character loves romance movies. So it's such a great love letter to romance movies. There's a ton of romance movie references. And the trope is childhood enemies to love which is so cute. Another book that I read pretty recently that I've started recommending a lot is Heart of the Raven Prince. This is a Cinderella retelling and it is also young adult, so great for all ages. And it is a Cinderella retelling entangled with Faye. So it's got a little fantasy element in there too, which I feel like is really fun. And it's got all the great Cinderella elements, but because we have that Faye fantasy twist, we also get a whole new world and so many new elements as well. A book that has my favorite characters, 1000% Things We Never Got Over. I also think this might be my number one favorite romance right now. It's a small town, grumpy sunshine romance, and we get to know so many characters in the small town, which I love so much. It has such a big, full cast of characters. Like I would love to live in this town and have all these characters be my best friends. And then my second one for this question is A Touch of Darkness, kind of. This book doesn't have my favorite characters in the sense that like I wanna be best friends with all them, but it has my favorite characters in the sense that the characters are super interesting. This is a romance between Hades, the god of the underworld, and Persephone, the goddess of spring. And there's so many gods and goddesses in this book, as well as demigods. And I just think Greek mythology is so interesting. And it takes place in our modern day world. So also to see how all of these powerful gods fit into modern day society was really interesting. Okay, three more questions left. A book you wish you could live in, college romance. Every college romance I've read just has like the best characters, the most fun world. My favorite college romances is Icebreaker and then The Deal, which is the first book in the off-campus series. Both are also hockey romances, so we get to know all of the team members, which I think is really fun. So we get these like big cast of characters and I would just wanna be like besties with everyone in both of these books. College is just like such a fun time. Like you're like going to parties, going to class, hanging out, like having a bunch of roommates, like it's just so fun. A book that made you cry. I am also letting my mom borrow this book, but Hopeless by Colleen Hoover. I think this is my favorite Colleen Hoover book and I cried so hard in this book. It is so heartbreaking. It's a romance. I love the romance and both characters just have gone through so much in their life. Like I felt for them so hard. This book stole my freaking heart and ripped it in two. And if you want an absolutely devastating book, 
A Little Life made me cry. This book is a lot, like it's so emotionally and mentally draining. So I really wouldn't recommend it to anybody unless you're okay with the huge list of trigger warnings and feel like you're really in a good mental headspace. But if you want to read the most devastating book of your life, that would be this book. And our last question, I'm kind of sad this is coming to an end, a book you wish you could reread for the first time. My answer would be Verity by Colleen Hoover. This book is so shocking and so surprising and I just remember like my jaw on the floor the entire time I was reading this book. And if I were to reread it, it just wouldn't have the same effect because I know all of the crazy things that happen in it. So I would want to reread it for the first time again. It's super twisted, super dark. It's just crazy, a crazy plot. And my second answer for this question in a totally different direction is Red, White, and Royal Blue. I love this romance so much. I remember after reading it, my heart was just like so full. It's so cute and it's such a fun plot. It's a romance between the son of the president of the United States and a British prince. And it's got such fun tropes. It's enemies to fake friends to lovers. So they have a whole roller coaster of a journey in their relationship. We've also got such great politics in this book of both countries. And then dealing with the fact of coming out as being in a gay relationship such heavily in the public eye and how literally the whole world will react to their relationship. So it has such high stakes as well. And yeah, that is every single question and book I would recommend for this book recommendations tab. Let me know what y'all's answers would be to these questions. I feel like it's especially what book you would want to reread for the first time because I feel like most people's answer to that question would be like one of their favorite books ever. So I want to know what are y'all's favorite books that you'd want to read for the first time. And yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.